Shakyamuni Buddha attained his enlightenment at the Vajra seat of Bodhigaya under the Bodhi tree. After which he preached for forty-nine years and is generally recognized as the first Buddha of our time. He was born in the sixth century BC in North India, in a place now called Nambini in Nepal. His personal name was Siddhartha. His family name was Gautama, and the name of his clan was Saka. His father, Sudhodana, was the ruler of the kingdom of the Sakyas. His mother was Queen Maya. His legendary birth was particularly unusual. While his mother, Queen Maya, was on her way to her family home, she stopped for a while at Nambini. It was as she was plucking flowers from the asuka tree that she delivered Siddhartha from her right armpit while standing. This tree has now been called as the tree of no sorrow. The young prince spent his youth in comfort and luxury. In order to search for the meaning of life, at the age of 29, Prince Siddhartha left his family and residence to lead a homeless life and became an ascetic. He practiced under various teachers for six years to undergo a series of austere practices to weaken the power of his physical body and thereby release his spirit. He fasted and ate only one grain of rice a day, and his body was reduced to a mere skeleton. However, he found out the fertility of ascetic practices, and so he broke his fast. He went over to the river Narajana and bathed himself, but he fainted there. And when he recovered, he was offered a bowl of milk from Sogata, the daughter of a village headman living nearby. His body was miraculously restored. Then he went over to Bodhagaya at the Vajra seat and set himself down facing east. He said to himself, "Upon this seat, though my body dry up and my skin, my bones, and flesh be dissolved, without having reached enlightenment, no matter how long and difficult to reach, I shall not stir from this seat." It was here, seated under the Bodhi tree, that he again practiced for forty-nine days. At that one evening, at the break of dawn, at the age of thirty-five, he attained full enlightenment. After which, he was known as the Lord Buddha, the Enlightened One. After his enlightenment, Lord Buddha preached his first sermon of the Noble Eightfold Path, the Four Noble Truths, and the Middle Way to a group of five ascetics. In the deer park at Sarnath, in the vicinity of Varanasi, here, besides preaching the law, the Buddha also established the order of monks, the Sangha community. With the Buddha himself, his teaching, the Dharma, and the Sangha community, these came to be known as the Three Jewels. For forty-nine years, Lord Buddha preached his doctrines to people from all walks of life. In various different places in the land of India, then at the age of 84, the Lord Buddha laid himself down on his right side, with one leg resting on the other, in a place called Kusinaga, where he entered into Mahaparinirvana, the Great Departure. Before his Parinirvana, the Lord Buddha had made a prophecy or prediction. Of the coming of the second Buddha of our time, in the Sutra of Urgur Sel, it is said, eight years after my Nirvana, in the island of Danakosa, the founder of Tantric Buddhism will be born, whose name will be known as Bema Sambawa. With this, the prophecy by the Lord Buddha came to pass. The great Indian Tantric master, Guru Bema Sambawa. Is considered as the second Buddha of our time.
It was in late 8th century AD, during the reign of the Dharma king Trizong Dezin in Tibet, that Guru Bema Sambhava was invited into Tibet to spread the Buddha's teachings. After arriving in Tibet, and with the help of the great Kanpo Shantarasita, Guru Bema Sambhava began to build the first monastery in Tibet, known as the Samye Monastery, which literally means the unchanging, spontaneously arisen one. As made according to the Buddhist cosmology, it took five years for the whole construction of the monastery to be built. The Samye Monastery was the first monastery to have the three jewels of the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. During that time, 108 great translators of Tibet, including the great Benozana, together with another 108 great scholars from India, helped to translate all the main sutras, tantras, and sastras then current in the noble land of India, and thus became the jewel of the Dharma. At the same time, there were the seven men for testing who were ordained as monks, and thus formed the jewel of the Sangha together with Guru Bhama Sambhava himself as the jewel of the Buddha, the three jewels were thus firmly established in Tibet, resulting in what we now call as Tibetan Buddhism. Thus, Guru Bhama Sambhava is being reverent as the founder of Tibetan Buddhism, and that the school and the lineages that came down directly from Guru Bhama Sambhava is collectively known as the Nyingma Ba, or the Ancient One. Guru Bema Sambhava, or more generally known as Guru Rinpoche to the Tibetans, has achieved the highest attainments of the rainbow body, which is most extraordinary in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. According to the Nyingma Ba, there are the nine yanas which were taught by the primordial Dhanamakaya Buddha Samantabhadra. The summit of the nine yanas is known as the Great Perfection, which means that the mind naturally has all the qualities of the three bodies. Its nature is emptiness, its natural expression is clarity, and its compassion is all-encompassing. There are two main sections of the Great Perfection, namely the teachings on cutting through solidity and that on all-surpassing realization. And the highest attainment of Greek perfection is known as the immortal rainbow body of great transformation, which transcends the duality of samsara and nirvana, and thus transforms the physical body into rainbow light. The higher rainbow body transmutes all psychophysical components into the pure light of Buddhahood, so that no outward change is visible. This is why such great masters as Guru Bema Sambhava, Bema Namitra, Benozana, and so forth, can pass into other Buddha fields in the same forms. On the other hand, the lower rainbow body attainment transmutes consciousness, feeling, perception, and habitual tendencies into the pure light of Buddhahood. But then the component of matter shrinks in size until only fingernails, tooth enamel, hair, or relics remain. Yet, there were cases where great realized masters 
had deliberately left their bodies behind, so as to bless the future sentient beings. Among them, His Holiness Junjun Rinpoche is one such example. It was unanimously recognized among the Nyingma Bars that His Holiness Junjun Rinpoche is considered as the regent of Guru Rinpoche of our time. His Holiness Junjun Rinpoche was born in Bema Gurt in Tibet in 1904, and entered into Parinirvana in 1987 at the age of 84. According to the prayer to the legendary incarnations of Japje Dunjun Rinpoche, the garland of crystal pearls, the present incarnation of His Holiness Dunjun Rinpoche is the 18th of his line of incarnations, while his 19th incarnation will be Dorje Nompo, the exalted king of the kingdom of Shambhala, and that his 20th incarnation will be the last of the thousand Buddhas, known as Moba Wotaiye. There may be. Many other incarnations in between his 18th and the 19th incarnations, so that His Holiness can spread the Holy Dharma, and thus benefits countless sentient beings. His 17th incarnation was a great Tertan, Dunjum Lingba, who was prophesied by Guru Rinpoche himself long time ago. Due to the foreseen obscurations and obstacles that Dharma practitioners may encounter in this degenerate age. Guru Rinpoche has most compassionately and kindly blessed and hid many important Dharma teachings as concealed treasures, to be rediscovered by prophesied treasure revealers at the appropriate time and place in the future. This came to be known as the Near Terma lineage, as compared to the distant Kama lineage, and among these Terma teachings. One of the most recently revealed treasures were rediscovered by the Greek Tertan Dunjum Ningba, the previous predecessor of His Holiness Dunjum Rinpoche, as the new treasure of Dunjum. The qualities and activities of His Holiness Dunjum Rinpoche were beyond words, and that most of the Tibetan teachers nowadays were all his students. In imitating the palace of lotus light of Guru Rinpoche's glorious copper color mountain, His Holiness Dujun Rinpoche established a Sandopari monastery in Gombo of Tibet. Later on, he also established another Sandopari monastery in Kalimpong of India. There are three stories within this monastery. The uppermost story has a statue of the Buddha of boundless light, representing the Dalama Kaya. The second floor has a statue of the Lord of Compassion, representing the Samboga Kaya. In the middle of the ground floor is a statue of Guru Rinpoche, representing the Nimana Kaya. On the right-hand side of Guru Rinpoche is a statue of the Great Tertan Dunjum Ningba, and on his left side is a statue of His Holiness Dunjum Rinpoche.
While His Holiness Jujun Rinpoche was still in Tibet, he wrote an open letter proclaiming to the world that Jabje Chatrasangye Dorje Rinpoche is the vital region of all the transmissions and teachings of the Dunjum Tsa lineage. In other words, Jabje Chatrasangye Dorje Rinpoche is the principal doctrine holder, as well as the Lord of the Mandala of the Dunjum Tsa lineage. The Dunjum Tsa lineage is the most direct, pure, and powerful lineage of treasure teachings, to be directly transmitted from Guru Rinpoche himself through Dunjum Nyingma, His Holiness Dunjum Rinpoche, to the Great Realized Master Jabje Chetra Sangye Dorje Rinpoche. According to the golden words of Jabje Chetra Sangye Dorje Rinpoche, there are at least thirteen disciples who have practiced the Dunjum Tsa lineage. And had achieved the highest attainments of the rainbow body. Hence, one can see the special significance and auspiciousness of the Dunjum Tsa lineage. These Dharma treasures are the teachings which possess the warm breath of Guru Rinpoche himself, as there are no contaminations and errors in them, and so they are extremely powerful. They have almost no obstructions for the practices. Their accomplishments are easy to attain, and their fruits are swiftly achieved. Hence, if one can receive these precious treasures directly from this principal doctrine holder and great realized master Jabje Chatra Sangye Dorje Rinpoche himself, then the blessings of these teachings are most auspicious, and that the benefit of this is that it will be much easier to accomplish results. Now, in his 90th birthday, Jabje Chetra Sangye Dorje Rinpoche is reverent as a peerless exemplary elder of the Nyingma Path. He never concerns himself with either fame or glory or wealth or position and other worldly concerns, but instead he spent most of his life in sacred places, caves, and hermitages for long-term retreats and dharma practice. It was only after he had achieved his highest realizations that he decided to come back to society and teach others. He has many teachers, and among them, his most beloved crowning jewel was the great Katok Kenpo Agi Wangbo. As for the Dunjum Tsa lineage, Jabje Chaturambhaja. Has very special lineage from Tse Dreamy Wazel and the Wisdom Dakini Sarakandro, which he specially offered back to His Holiness Junjun Rinpoche. While
After His Holiness Dujun Rinpoche entered into Paranavana, Jabje Chacho Rinpoche is the only one who holds the complete transmissions and teachings of the Dunjum Tersa lineage. This is the reason why Jabje Dunjum Rinpoche III holds Jabje Chacho Rinpoche as his crowning jewel, in order to receive back the complete transmissions and teachings of the Dunjum Tersa lineage. Jepje Chaturamboche has always put great emphasis on the genuine practice of the Holy Dharma. The qualities and activities of Jepje Chaturamboche are indeed immense. The retreat center established by Jepje Chaturamboche in Darjeeling, India, back in 1962, was the first of its kind outside of Tibet, and so, with its major influence. More and more retreat centers came to be established in the Himalayan regions. Then later on, he built the Sawbird Monastery in Siriguri, India, where the annual Nyoni ceremony is practiced. For this year in 2001, more than 800 people attended this yoni ceremony in Siriguri, India. At the sacred place of Yangnesha in Nepal. Where Guru Rinpoche had great realizations in practicing Dorje Purba, Jabje Chetra Rinpoche has built a small monastery with the retreat center. Then, in Godavari in Nepal. The sacred land of Raja Yogini, Jabje Chetra Rinpoche again established another retreat center, and the great stupa which, upon seeing, liberates. At the same time, Jabje Chaturamboche also has the annual event of the freeing of large quantities of fishes. At Yomo in Nepal, he also established another retreat center. Jepje Chetra Rinpoche has a close relationship with Lama Sonam Tsui Genten, alas Guru Lao Yue Chi, the Chinese spiritual representative of His Holiness Dujun Rinpoche in the Far East. It was back in 1958 when Guru Lao received all the transmissions and teachings of the Nara Tong Trok from His Holiness Dujun Rinpoche that he and Jepje Chetra Rinpoche knew each other ever since.
Guru Lal went to Kalampong, India, in 1958, to receive transmissions and teachings from His Holiness to Jum Rinpoche. What you see here was the old residence of His Holiness to Jum Rinpoche in Kalampong, India, the place where Guru Lal received his teachings. The book, the visit of His Holiness Jujun Rinpoche to Hong Kong in 1972, records the event that took place back in 1972 when His Holiness Jujun Rinpoche gave the Dorje Lobon initiation to Ishitaye. Besides the transmissions of the Dorje Lobon initiation and other important teachings to Ishitaye back in 1972. His Holiness Dujun Rinpoche also gave many important initiations, teachings, and fifth instructions of the Dunjum Tersa lineage to Ishitaye during his two other visits to Hong Kong in 1981 and 1984. It was one year before he passed away in 1997 that Guru Lao had given his authority to Ishitaye as his lineage holder of both the Nara Tongtrok and of Dunjum Tersa lineages. So that Ishitaye can uphold and spread the Holy Dharma to all suitable vassals, Ishitaye has been following and practicing the Holy Dharma under Guru Lao for more than 30 years, and this had been validated by a letter of introduction signed by Guru Lao himself. Since 1997, Ishitaye has been most fortunate to be accepted. As the humble servant and disciple of Japje Chaturambhaje, who is his most beloved crowning jewel. At the same time, Japje Chaturambhaje was most kind and compassionate by personally writing a letter of authorization for Ishitaye, authorizing him to uphold and further spread the Holy Dharma for the sake of all motherly sentient beings. Ever since, Japje Chaturambhaje has given his full support for the Dharma activities of the Dunjum Buddhist Association International, and he has, in fact, personally designed the logo for the association. It was during the Tibetan Lhasa in 2000 that Japje Chaturambhaje and Japje Dunjum Rinpoche III had kindly transmitted the Dunjum Tersa Undru to members of the Dunjum Buddhist Association. Ishitaye offered a long life mandala to both Rinpoches before the transmission. First of all, on behalf of our Dunjum Buddhist Association and uh, all our disciples here.
With the encouragement and support from Jabje Chaturambache, Yishitaye founded the Dunjun Buddhist Association International in Hong Kong back in 1998, so as to fulfill the last wish of Guru Lao in spreading the teachings of both the Narutangtrok and the Dunjum Terza lineages. Among the major Dharma activities that were being held by Yishitaye for the past few years, the prominent ones include the following. First, the practice of confession and the recitation of precepts every month. Second, public lectures on the attainment of Buddhahood in one's lifetime and the essence of the Bado teachings. Third, the three of fishes. Fourth, the teaching of Tibetan Buddhist meditation classes. The pilgrimages for visiting Jabje Chetrimboche and Jabje Dunjum Rinpoche III in India and Nepal. Members of the Dunjum Buddhist Association visited Jabje Chetrimboche at his Salbury Monastery in Siriguri, India, in 2001, and Rinpoche was most compassionate by giving his spiritual advice to all the Sangha members. 
6. The publication of the whole set of 10 CDs on mind training and Dharma practice. 7. The publication of the journal Light of Lotus. 8. The teachings on the practices of the Holy Dharma, starting from Undru practices and so forth. 
जीते एक गांव से ने बगे माटू कोखा अभी मुझे भी नेरी मोबाइल पर दो ने हापर दे